every clinical research case that we look at is a little bit of a mystery. It's a little mm -hmm. bit of an investigation. And there's a, an immense satisfaction uh, from being able to really um, solve, solve mysteries, ultimately knowing that solving those mysteries is, is helping somebody. My name is Dr. Adam Smith. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Toronto. We have to talk about the uh, elephant in the room when it comes to cytogenetics, and that's the, the G-banded karyotype. This is a nearly a half a century old technique. The, the karyotype gives us a very good view, but it suffers from some serious limitations. It's really unable to get down to the resolution that we need to make important discoveries about what the rearrangement is, what the mechanism is, and what the partners are, and that is ultimately what's important. If you look at the classification systems that we have for most of the different hematological malignancies, there are a lot of structural variations that are important in defining. So we have an ever-growing list of types of leukemia that are defined by their translocations. So their, their detection is of paramount importance. And unfortunately, with microarray technology, we're just not able to see these structural rearrangements, the numerical changes, the copy number changes. And it's really ultimately important for the biology that we understand the ramifications of these different rearrangements and how they affect outcomes for patients in the longer term. The amount of genomic testing that we're doing is exploding as we start to look at more and more targets. So we had staff constraints and logistical constraints, and all of these things were sort of giving us the notion that we really needed to find a technology that could simplify the lab workflow, that could give us the resolution that we needed to be able to really solve a lot of parallel problems in the lab at once. That's where OGM was really surprising to me immediately at, at the precision and the objectivity. The lab has been very excited about the technology right from the get-go. We were surprised at how robust and how fast we got going. As we've done more and more samples, we're starting to see really interesting structural variation that overlaps critical genes, uh, like inversions that, that mix up the coding sequence of a gene that makes it not functional anymore. We're also seeing a lot of changes that are cryptic that we're unable to see with conventional techniques. There were lots of cases where when we tried orthogonal methods, they didn't match up and we weren't really sure what was going on. And well, sure enough, we pulled a few of those samples out. We ran them in optical genome mapping. And all of a sudden, we found all of the structural variation that was overlapping that region. Without the structural context, you just don't have the whole story. We're seeing a lot of interest in optical genome mapping as a frontline approach for looking at structural variation for hematological malignancies. And I think that's what's really exciting about you know, being in this part of you know, the development of research around new technologies is, is that not only can we discover all of these things, but we can also help in the development of, of new therapies eventually for patients that will give them better, better quality of life.